Hello and uh, welcome to the market report for May 2023. This is Televisional here, reporting in on market trends, new technology, and uh, market analysis. Today's uh, economic analysis, uh, and today is uh, Saturday, May 20th, about uh, <clears throat> early morning time. Uh, a lot of talk in the news about the U.S. debt ceiling and uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C. It's, it's a topic that spans across the, uh, the geopolitical, uh, both uh, political sphere and the economic and financial sphere, and then uh, becomes also a, a, a broad-based business matter also. This, this reaches in a lot of directions. Um, the U.S. national debt load is up, and we're at our debt limit here. Uh, around June, um, there's a <clears throat> kind of a political showdown of sorts, as there often is when we meet the debt limit, um, and, and, and we have many times before. And usually what happens is they run it to the 11th hour, so to speak, and then after a bunch of back and forth about what they're going to do, there's a variety of compromises, and then they usually end up raising the limit and then cutting spending or a combination of those things. Sometimes they go and do some sort of financial hat trick and uh, cut back spending by sequestering some of the federal employees for a few weeks, but usually the matter is resolved one way or the other. Uh, likely, if you look at the historical precedents, that's usually what happens. Um, Biden has cut past his sh trip to Asia, uh, sh cut short, and came back early. So he can be, be back Sunday. That's tomorrow, May 21. Um, so there's um, various going-ons uh, about this. And the main thing to know is that the, uh, the debt ceiling is there so that we won't spend too much money. Obviously, we had to spend more money during the... Uh, the pandemic and the um, emergency there uh, and what happened there. They can either raise taxes to bring in more revenue uh, for the government uh, or they will do debt monetization. Those are the two most usual ones where basically they do quantitative easing. It's sometimes called money printing or money creation. Um, there's been a lot of quantitative easing in the last 10 years. Uh, and lowering of interest rates, so they're down pretty low already. Um, so those things have kind of played out. So this is considered politically the more palatable way. Uh, it's kind of an indirect form of taxation, but it usually leads to inflation, uh, among other things, uh, as the value of each individual dollar effectively is lower as they print more dollars. And so it kind of debases the currency at some level. That tends to, as the value of the dollar goes lower, there usually is inflation. Hard goods and other assets usually appreciate in value. These include commodities such as metals, um, petroleum, the price of food, we're seeing that go up, and fuel, and real estate, fixed assets, or the fixed amount of real estate, and uh, gold. And as we saw in the 1970s, uh, the price of gold made an extraordinary move up during the economic problems that we had then, but also the high inflation that we had in the 70s. Both gold and oil moved up dramatically. Oil moved up for other reasons also, as there was uh, we the U.S. made its mm, domestic peak oil situation. So we re reached um, kind of uh, production limits as far as how much we could do domestically, and we had to um, go international to bring in more oil for U.S. oil consumption. We see here in this chart here that uh, the gold price is not hard to extrapolate where we think it might be going. Uh, the overall mega trend over the decades is very clear, and it looks like we're breaking through the uh, the two thousand dollar limit here uh, pretty shortly. Um, the next level up on a Fibonacci sequence would be uh, twenty five hundred or twenty eight or three thousand. Um, and then possibly move to 5,000 after that. That probably wouldn't happen quickly. Um, but if you look at the Fibonacci sequence, you know, there's the number 21 and 13. Uh huh. If you look at this chart, it was down at 1,300, and now it's up at about 2,100. So there's a lot of Fibonacci action in the markets that you can look for for guidance. 
in the Fibonacci sequence, it does kind of, a lot of these commodities do kind of move in these Fibonacci type, uh, type parallels. Um, so it's great to look at the uh, Fibonacci's and see what they tell us. Golden ratio, 60%. And uh, yeah, that, that talks about how growth and movements happen. And there's a lot of action there. So interesting stuff to see. Um, probably they will do an 11th hour hat trick or some sort of an agreement. There's a lot of political pressure to get some sort of agreement in place and not have a super economic crisis right now anyway. Uh, just going into an election. We might have more surprises to look at in 2025 uh, right after the election. So if this problem crops up again then and the election's just over, uh, that's that might be more of a crisis. And, and big financial crises are more prone to happen um, kind of after elections. Have happened. So if you look at historically in 29, that's after an election year in 1929. Um, and uh, 1933, again, that's after uh, the year after presidential election. So uh, anything could happen, but I think going in that we're having the big election year coming up next year, I think they're going to kick the can down the road some way or the other for the next uh, two years approximately. And uh, I, I'd, I'd be more worried about what happens in 2025. That's just one person's insight. It's not advice, uh, but it's just uh, some, based on historical precedent, make your own decisions based on your own analysis. Thanks for watching.